In this video, I'll talk about the Salmon Diode fog lights, whether they're worth purchasing, their pros, cons, features, and all that. I bought this set from Amazon. They're delivered in a box like this. It's nice to see it marked as fragile, meaning it's highly likely the fog lights will arrive undamaged. Each headlight comes wrapped in bubble wrap and it's covered with a film on top, for good reason. The plastic on the headlights is extremely delicate, unbelievably delicate. I'll talk more about this later. Actually, that's all that comes in the box. Details. The name Salman is molded inside the headlight. It's a fake. Well, it's a bit pricey. There's also a second inscription of Salman inside the headlight set in black plastic. Again, it's a casting, so I'm 99% sure it's an original. Inside, there are five diodes consisting of three large and two small. The warranty is laser engraved on the body. What else do we see? This mounting part is made of plastic. This piece, actually the headlight body itself, is made from metal. At the back, there's an adjustment screw to move the headlight up and down. The wiring is well done. Everything's made to a pretty high standard. The lens, which is actually plastic, not glass, is glued to the body with black sealant. It's all put together neatly. Following the wire, you'll probably find the control unit. Let's call it that. It's also made with a metal radiator. The total power is 60 watts for both headlights. If you try to remove the cover, you won't see or find anything inside. It's all filled with something like silicone. The plug is just a standard one. Overall, there are no issues with the body, except for one significant problem, the lens. Remember, it's plastic, not glass, and it's so delicate that using the headlight without a protective film would be disastrous. To give you an idea of how fragile it is, while I was applying the protective film and cleaning the headlight, I managed to create micro scratches with just a microfiber cloth. Yes, you heard that right, microfiber. So I'm certain that sandblasting would absolutely destroy this lens. Without the film, the headlight would quickly start to look pretty bad. So. My old original headlights are nine years old now, and even though they're glass, I decided to apply a protective film. It's my first time doing this, and according to the seller, it's polyurethane. The first attempt didn't go smoothly, but the second application was better, though not perfect. I'd give it a solid B grade. With a hairdryer, some alcohol, and a bit of experience, you can get the job done. It should last at least a season, maybe longer. Time will tell. These fog lights fit a wide range of cars. It's probably the most common size. The four-point mounting works for various models, including my Peugeot 308 T. Everything fit like a glove. I tucked the light blocks behind the headlight where there was just enough space for them. Of course, the installation process might vary for different car models. And most importantly, how well do they illuminate? And am I satisfied with the result? Take a look at how these fog lights perform in the most challenging conditions. It's that tricky time when dusk is setting in. Not quite dark yet, but definitely not bright either. The light output is impressive, bright and rich. The beam pattern is nearly perfect. One headlight projects an ideal line while the other is ever so slightly blurred, but it's hardly noticeable. The spread of light is quite wide. I should mention that in my case, it's actually limited by the plastic housing. It could potentially be even wider, but the housing restricts it. On a country road, it looks something like this. On the right, we've got the Salman fog light, and on the left, the standard factory one. From the video, the advantages of the LED fog light aren't immediately obvious. Sure, it seems to shine a bit brighter, but the left one isn't too shabby either. I'll let you be the judge. Take a look for yourselves. No need for further commentary, really. And to make it clearly visible, this is already a country highway and two diode fog lights. Here, everything is clearly visible. And once again, for emphasis, two diode lamps on the asphalt of a country road. While you're watching, here's a small brief conclusion. I like the lamps overall, but an obvious downside is the extremely delicate glass. But the protective film solves that problem. The price at the time of purchase was 150 Belarusian rubles or $46. Another point, perhaps the issue is with me. But I couldn't find these lamps with a color temperature of 4,300 Kelvin, only 6,000 Kelvin, which I really wanted. Maybe I didn't search well enough. Moving on, if you're concerned about passing vehicle inspection in the Republic of Belarus, you shouldn't have any problems. I'm all good with that. Plus, I specifically drew attention to my headlights and spoke with the inspector and he said they don't care about fog lights. Now, having diodes instead of halogens is bad. They won't pass you with those. The key thing here is that fog lights, they used to work. But if they're available now, I'll repeat, there used to be an issue with LED fog lights. But at some point, either they got new instructions or something changed for them. Now, as of 2023 going into 2024, that's it. This problem doesn't bother them anymore. There's a fog light, it works, everything's fine. So in conclusion, if you're not worried about the cost, I definitely recommend them. After using them for almost five months, I've had no problems, no questions about how these lights will perform in the future. Well, time will tell. So that's all from me today. Drive safely, everyone. Bye for now.